Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Wiseman. Today we're going to talk about how to work in mediumship, specifically how to connect with your beloved departed, the people who love and who love you, who have transitioned. Now, when someone transitions, it's very difficult to know that you won't be able to connect, to connect with them in the way you used to. You want to have a sign from them or know how they're doing, just know that they're okay. So in many cases, there are things you still need to say or do around your relationship with this person. And maybe it didn't get resolved before they passed. Death is incredibly confusing. Even when we know somebody's gonna die, if we have a warning, and it's a natural thing, such as if they're very old, we can be shocked when it actually happens, when they actually do transition. And if a person's death was unexpected, or if they were young or in the prime of their life, it can be even more difficult to accept that they're gone. And of course, if it's a person we were exceptionally close to, such as a lover or partner or a child, we may be devastated and not know how we're gonna pull through the grief and move on. And finally, if we had a conflict with the person and we never resolved the conflict, we may feel deep regret and remorse as time goes on. So while we know that death is natural and we know it's part of the cycle of life and yet death takes us all by surprise, even, even if it's expected, it takes us by surprise. Um, even when we know it's gonna happen, we don't always believe it. Um, I know in my own life, when my father died, uh, he had been sick for two years, terminally ill, but I didn't really understand that he was dying until a few hours before his death. Again, it's like, I knew he was terminally ill, but I somehow thought he was going to get better um, terminal. And yet this idea that there would be a miracle or something would change. And of course he did pass and the grief was very shocking, even though it was completely expected and it took a lot, long time to get over. Now, soon after he passed, my father, who was never spiritual at all, not religious, um, a very practical man who liked sports and spy novels, right? Uh, he began to show up as a spirit and I began to communicate with him both beyond the veil and in this physical world. And uh, it was such a gift, it was such a gift. So I believe this is one of the most important things we can learn to do is how to connect with our beloved departed so that we can enjoy the comfort of connecting with them at a soul level. Again, you know, my father did, <laughs> never in his lifetime would have been interested and yet here it was, it happened. This is, ha this is possible for all of us, even if we're not spiritually, spiritually inclined, so to say. So of course you can work with a medium to connect with your beloved departed, a lot of really gifted folks out there who can do this with you. And yet the truth is you also have the power to create this connection yourself. This is something you can do safely and easily. And you can do this simply by going into a relaxed meditative state. And I think it's much better for you to learn this skill, because then you're going to have a much deeper connection and a much greater understanding and much greater comfort and healing if you do it yourself. You're gonna have that direct connection with your beloved departed as the, instead of um, having a third person as a triangle in the connection. So how, how do we do this? So first of all, so many, so many superstitions about what's gonna happen if you go beyond the veil, right? The movies show us these horrific scenes of ghouls and ghosts and, and the paranormal, uh, but this is not 
in any way what happens when we work in love. Um, and when I say love, I mean the highest vibration of love. And I also mean this longing that comes from wanting to create healing in a relationship that maybe didn't have love uh, so clearly stated. Maybe there were conflicts uh, that need to be healed now. So we start by we enter into a gentle trance. And gentle means you're relaxed, you're easy on yourself, you're working from a place where you aren't too attached to what happens. The word trance means you're in a meditative state have your eyes closed you do some gentle breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth and you breathe in this way in through the nose and out through the mouth because this style of breathing changes your physiology to a more relaxed state it actually shifts your hormones and it shifts you energetically. And for those of you who've done this type of work, this breathing before, this type of work with me, you're already entrained. Even when I said gentle trance, you started to go into that state. And then once you're in this gentle trance state, you might wanna set some intentions for while you're there. And so some intentions, some examples might be um, and these are really from the heart. I deeply miss my loved one and I want to tell them how much I love them. I'm hoping to connect with my loved one and I would like them to give me a message or a sign about how they're doing. I would like to receive a sign from my loved one so I can know they're there. I need to make amends or whatever your intention is. And uh, even as I'm, I'm <laughs> saying this, uh, I want to receive a sign. I just had this sensation of my hair uh, being sort of touched or um, moved a little, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, so they're here in the room and this is gonna happen to you too. You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure who it is, uh, but it's like this little thing happened even I'm, as I'm saying the words. And some things that come up during this work for the grieving person are such things as I don't know what the afterlife is, or I'm not sure where my loved one is, and I'm not sure what I believe about death. And I want to say that, um, you know, it, all of the traditions that have explored this, say, Tibetan Book of the Dead, is just one of the big, you know, tombs on this. All of the practices that say, here's how it is. I don't know. I don't know. I only know what I, as a living person, can do when I connect in. And when I speak to other living people who connect in, this is what we receive. This is what happens. And there's this commonality to our experience. Do we really know? I don't know. I know what I experience when I make the connection. Is there something more that we can't understand, perhaps? All we can do is try and connect and see what happens for ourselves. And what I have found is that that's very profound. It's very profound what happens. So what happens for most people is when they make this connection in mediumship, uh, the connection with the loved one is so uh, wonderful and fulfilling and so complete that they're they're very they're very comforted in their grieving and they don't doubt in any way that what took place was real. Some of the things that happen in uh, mediumship experiences are so unbelievable. I don't mean like glasses flying around the room. I mean like what the emotional knowing is or the types of messages that come so unexpectedly. 
So most of you are not going to see your loved one in the room with you. Now, some of you are. Uh, some of you have that ability beyond the veil in a visual way. But most of you are you going to see him in the same way as when you meditate, which is uh, in your mind's eye, your third eye. This is when you meditate, when you daydream, when you dream, it's all happening in this chakra up here. And again, this is the most common way most of us are going to see our loved one is when we're working in our third eye. Now, some of you are going to see uh, some of my family members are very strong mediums and they see apparition in the room. So if that happens, great, go with it. If that doesn't happen, great, go with that. It's fine. So in our third eye, we're in the gentle trance. We're relaxing. We pay attention to our third eye and we can receive communication in a few ways. Visions are... Uh, one of the ways that your departed will show you things in your mind's eye. And maybe you'll suddenly have pop into your mind's eye an object that has a meaning or a symbolism for you. Or the departed may show you uh, themselves doing an action, almost like a pantomime or like a, they're doing a sketch for you of something that they're trying to communicate that they want you to understand. My dad often came, my dad was not a handyman <laughs> in any way, and he often came, or uh, sometimes, well, it hasn't come this way lately, but he often came with like a tool belt, like a con contractor would wear to show me that he was fixing things up or building things. It's very direct and kind of a funny thing since that was not his practice. So visions. Telepathy is a way of communicating with your family and friends who've crossed over so you're just in this gentle trance state and suddenly you just know they're there. Um, you aren't able to talk with them the way we talk with our mouths or our voices in the living world, but you'll be able to have telepathy with them. And what I often experience or other people also describe is it's almost like when you're trying to talk with someone underwater, you can see the mouth moving but you can't hear the words clearly. With the departed, it's very similar. You can often see that they're trying to talk to you, but where it comes in is, you know, your clear audience it, as a telepathy. It comes in as a telepathy. You don't hear the actual words. Now, occasionally you are going to hear actual words in the room, but, uh, you know, just what happens is unique to you. So allow this. Feelings are another way your departed are going to communicate. And I like to think of this word for this as a way of emotional flooding. So when you're having emotional flooding, um, you feel an intense emotion all over all at once. Um, you feel it throughout your body, throughout your mind. It's as if it's washed into your cells. And your departed loved ones are often uh, incredibly adept at creating this kind of profound feeling state for you. And you might think of it like a lot of cases, a love blast or a surge of light or a surge of uh, heart love. And this is why, you know, this experience of working in mediumship for yourself, it creates such healing when we have this emotional flooding with and from this departed loved one, everything is released and everything is solved. Um, we just understand at a much higher level, the bigger picture of us as, you know, souls together in this lifetime and in all the lifetimes returning and again and again to work with each other. Um, signs are also very easy for some departed to create. And these could be very simple signs such as you're thinking about a loved one and then a, a bird flies right onto your windowsill and stays there and looks at you and you simply know in your heart that this is your loved one. Or maybe some of you have experienced a beautiful rainbow will suddenly form. You've been thinking about your loved one or something unexpected happens and you just know it's your departed. So these are beautiful ways and animals especially um, are very adept at being messengers from 
departed world to our world, uh, being messengers, messengers for the departed. And when we move deeply in the connection with our family and friends who've crossed over, we see that the realm they inhabit is profoundly light. Again, it's this energy of love. In this world of the living, there's a lot of uh, lower vibration and a lot of grittiness and a lot of um, dissonant energy. But in the land of the departed, what, what we experience when we're communicating is this different realm that they're inhabiting that doesn't have any of that. And I think this is probably why, you know, a lot of religions use this term of heaven or nirvana or, you know, the promised land or the promised place or this idea of this beautiful resting place. Because when we are con in connection with the departed, that's what it is. It's as if they've gone up and they're completely healed and they're at peace and they're in joy. All the things that maybe they couldn't experience in this lifetime for whatever reason. And they go to this place and there they are and they're able to communicate this to us. They're able to communicate this to us. And finally, um, I would say that the departed aren't just <laughs> sitting around waiting for our, our, you know, our phone call of mediumship connection. They are doing things, they are learning, they are getting ready for their next lifetimes, they are uh, connecting with each other. So um, it's not just they're, you know, just sitting there waiting, they are having their own experience in a different realm. So understanding that is pretty interesting to see what, what is happening either in life between lives or uh, if they're preparing for their next incarnation or if they're doing something different, um, just pretty fascinating. You know, there's so much more to this life than this life. And when we start to explore this, one thing we learn really quickly is that love, love just never dies. Okay, if you'd like to go deeper and learn how to do this yourself, how to contact your family and friends who have crossed over, you can go to sarahwiseman.com and then go to courses and then go to the mediumship project. I'm Sarah Wiseman. Thank you for listening.